We've got another episode coming for you. We appreciate you guys tuning in a couple extra times a week, and we really appreciate our guests that have been on the show. If you're a new time listener, check us out. Subscribe. We're Oddity Files, the podcast, and we bring you creepy, cryptid, otherworldly stories that we find on the internet. We have a huge library to go back and binge on. We appreciate your time. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, weird is the new cool, and ghost on. So guys, welcome back to another episode. I have been wanting to get this lovely gent on the show for quite some time, and now he has some time, so I reached out and he's down for it. I would like to introduce David Wasley. Am I pronouncing it right? Is it Wasley? Yes, that's really good. Yeah, really good. I'd, I would like to introduce David Wasley Wood. He, you may notice there's a funny accent. I find it charming and it makes him even more handsome in my book. Um, he is from Not for the Dinner Table, which is another paranormal podcast out there. And I had the pleasure of meeting David about a year ago. Yeah, right? Yep, just over a year now. Yeah. April time. No, March time. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me on. It's so lovely to speak to you. Um, Not for the Dinner Table is a paranormal podcast where we sit down and talk things that we see are not suitable for the dinner table. I say we because it's with my lovely co-host and friend of over 16 years, Sophie. Uh, we usually take a topic. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah, she's just, she's <laughs> the best. She is so good. And we choose a topic we each go and investigate something about it and then we bring it back to the table and we discuss it usually over a couple of glasses of prosecco because we'll pop a bottle at the beginning of the episode and that's real every single episode that's not pre-recorded as you'll probably notice <laughs> as we get more slurred as the episode goes on so, <laughs> i really enjoy it really enjoy it we've been doing it for just over a year and a half now and we've got to meet great people like yourself and clayton and dj jimmy and wah, other wah. podcasts. I mean, I find it really bizarre to this day that you guys were the first podcasters that we met in person and you live on the other side of the world. <laughs> I know, it's kind of nuts. <laughs> yeah, but so good, so good. So yeah, it's, that's uh, that's us. And you're on all the, the social medias, right? Go ahead and give oh, your yes. at your stuff. Yeah, so on Twitter, we are at NFTDT, and I look after Twitter. And on Instagram, we are at not for the underscore dinner table, and Instagram is looked after by Sophie. Perfect. And do you have a Facebook page as well? We do, um, but we probably are more active at the moment on Twitter and Instagram. But if you just search not for the dinner table in Facebook, you'll find us. Perfect. So, and they can find your podcast on all the major podcast apps. Make sure they rate, review, subscribe. And um, so, yeah, that's how we met. I think it was Twitter. And I realized I was heading your way very shortly. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to meet you. And we did. Yeah, so (laughs) I can't remember how we got talking on Twitter, but we'd been talking for a while, hadn't we? And then you said, oh, we're coming over. And I was like okay, well, let's do this. And it sort of just all aligned because Sophie was already going to be down uh, in London. So I came down as well. And it was just absolutely fantastic. We had the best time. We put you to work at the day job. Yes, I do feel like I am an honorary member of Celeb Photo Ops. For you the rest absolutely of time. are. <laughs> <laughs> and when we met, David had stories. And that's, I mean, of course, I want to tell you about their podcast, which we talk about all the time, but David has stories and I don't even know where you should start. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Yeah. Okay. So um, I suppose really I should start with, uh, I'm kind of a little bit like you where I've always felt like I was a bit sensitive around these sorts of things. Um, And I'd always sort of pick up on vibes or whether a place was welcoming or not, or whether there was Mm -hmm. something there or not. And that's kind of always been with me throughout my life. But it wasn't until I was about 14, 15, that I sort of started having really strange encounters. And it all started when I was actually hit by a car. And that's when my jaw hit the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So it wasn't, well, I don't even know whether you could call it a near-death experience. I I don't think it was a near-death experience. I was injured quite badly. But um, 
basically what happened was I was crossing a road. I got hit by a car at 40 miles an hour. I went over the top of the windscreen, smashed into it and flipped over and then ended up on the floor. So listeners, don't worry. I didn't remember any of it (laughs) apart from stepping off the road and then waking up on the floor, looking at the stars and going, oh, what's going on? But that's (laughs) when things got a little bit strange because I kind of was dropping in and out of consciousness whilst um, I was waiting for the ambulance to arrive and my mum turned up. And when I was finally in the ambulance, my mum was really shaking because she was so um, in shock about what had happened. Terrified. And I said to her, oh, mum, are you, are you cold? And she said, no, no, uh, I'm not cold. I'm fine. And I said, you don't need to worry. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, you don't need to worry because Nan came and sat with me. And so at oh. first she thought I was talking about my nan that lived uh, in Long Levens, which was near where I got run over. And she went, no, no, uh, Nanny Chris is at home. She doesn't know what's happened. And I said, no, not Nanny Chris. Your mum came and sat with me. And so my mum's mum died when I was a year old. So I'd never really met her um, enough to get to know her or form memories of her. I then went on right. to describe her perfectly to my mum and I don't think my mum could sort of cope with with all of this at that time, because obviously I was a complete mess. And that now I'm telling her that, you know, her mum's come down to to look after me during this time. And I told her that my nan had come and sat with me and said, you know, I'll make sure that you're OK, but now's not your time yet. So, you know, just make sure that you uh, get better. So then she left and... It wasn't until uh, a couple of weeks later that mum brought it up again. And she said, oh, could you remember what you said to me in the ambulance? And I said, oh, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't really know. I can't really remember. And so we talked about it. And I was like, yeah, I do remember. And I can still to this day remember her being there and what she looked like. And it was just really, really bizarre. And then I suppose after that, that sort of, I suppose, heightened the ability and then going forward I've sort of felt like I've encountered lots of spirits or or ghosts in certain places that is such an amazing story and the fact that yeah you you remember what you saw blows my mind because I don't think I asked you about that when you told me the story the first time and I'm not gonna lie the second time I didn't get any less goosebumps it's such a great story so do you investigate it it all or do you just kind of run into ghosts places you go so the probably the next time that I started seeing ghosts was when I got my first job so I used to work in Debenhams which is a super store kind of a bit like Target I would say or is it Saks Saks no Saks yeah, is a little more target. Howdy, howdy, targets a little more everyday man. Yeah, let's say Target. And okay. that superstore was where I live is built on a graveyard from oh. a church. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So where I live, where I live, there is graveyards around where there are now buildings because it used to be a Roman city and then has since continued to be a city. And so when I started, obviously I was the new kid. I was quite young, and they would tell they would tell me stories of um, the ghosts that would be in the in the store. And there was yeah. a lady in white that used to to reside in the back stairs that you would take to get up to the break room. And there would be um, a gentleman that would live in the basement and in the gentleman in the men's stock room in the basement. And so my first job was working stock. So making sure it was in the stock room and then bring it out to the floor. And all of my colleagues said, oh, we won't we won't work in the basement on our own. And I was like, oh, OK, well, I don't I don't really mind. I'll go and I'll go and do that shift. So I was down okay. in the basement and I was just um, like tagging up some trousers, I think. And I was just writing on this plastic piece of plastic and out of my peripheral vision I saw somebody walk round the edge of the stock room where the rails were and I was like oh it just must be someone coming down to get me for my break yeah and as they were got closer they broke into a run and they were running full pelt at me and I, and I sort of <gasps> looked and I was like this is weird and I looked straight up as if to say what's going on and there was no one there what I know <laughs> so immediately <laughs> I was like, okay, 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on board with this. So I left the stock room <laughs> as quickly as possible, got into the lift, went all the way up to the third floor where the um, women's stock room was, ran in there and said um, to Pat, who was my work colleague, I was like, Pat, I am never, ever going into the men's stock room on my own again. And she went, you've seen him, haven't you? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, yes, I have. Yes, I have. But I mean, it, we used to see activity down there all the time. Like when they would be putting stock into um, baskets and onto shelves, it would get thrown off as it was being put what? on the shelf. It was so bizarre. It was so, so bizarre. Oh my God. Now, is this store still around? Yeah, it's still open to this to this day, yeah, at the moment. Oh, wow. But is definitely haunted. So did you ever see the lady in white? I never saw the lady in white, but you tended not to go down those stairs very much. So I don't think many people saw her. And there's, you know, there's a lady in white in most places. So, oh, of course. but the, the, the guy in the basement. Why is it always white? Yeah, <laughs> indeed. There were other colors, right? <laughs> and I don't, I've never seen anyone buried in a white dress. Just putting it out there. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> But yeah, there's quite a few areas in uh, Gloucestershire where I live, which are quite haunted. So one of the ghost hunts that we did do is we went to the ancient Ram Inn, which is in Wooden Under Edge. I saw that ghost adventure. Yes. I mean, that place is full of activity. And I was a bit skeptical at first um, because it was the first time that I was using sort of new techniques but definitely yeah. we encountered some things that I, I couldn't explain. So we did a spirit board downstairs. And whilst doing the spirit board, I was poked in the arm by something. Oh. Um, and we were at that time talking to a little girl on the spirit board because the people that were conducting the the ghost hunt with us said, you know, there are a lot of children's spirits here. There are a couple of other spirits, but, you know, the children do tend to come through quite a bit, which they did. Oh, wow. So I got poked by something of which I was like, this, this isn't this. And that's when I sort of started to be like, okay, something's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. And then they took us up into the loft and we did some glass uh, divination um, where we were just, instead of using the spirit board, it was just using a glass on a table and it would go okay. to one side for yes or one side for no. And um, whilst we were doing that, and I can't explain this, but whilst we were doing that, the floorboard started bouncing. No. And there were, it, um, it was like two o'clock in the morning. So there were no cars driving down the road at all. And yeah. the lady next the lady next to me who ran the, ran the event was like, did you feel that? And I said, yeah, I did. The floorboards moved. And she was like, yeah, that's that's the children. They're coming up and they're playing behind you. They're, they're moving, they're bouncing up and down. And I was like, okay, this is freaking me out now. <laughs> and then we, we then got to go and do a little bit of our own investigation. So Sophie and I went off on our own because I did this one with Sophie. Mm -hmm. And we went into this room and we took a K2 meter with us. And so we were like, you know, come and uh, touch the K2 meter, make the lights go. And we were sat there and we we hadn't had anything for ages. And we were just talking to the room, talking to the room. And then, and we'd closed ourselves in this room. So we'd put the okay. latch on the door. The latch lifts up and the door opens. Yeah. And we go, yeah. okay. Do you want us to leave this room? And then the K2 meter flickers right up to the red. And we were like, right, no. okay, yeah, we will, <laughs> we'll leave. We'll leave. We, we won't stay in the room. We'll go. Nice chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for having us. See you soon. Yeah. So that oh, was, that, we got a lot, a lot of activity that night, which really sort of, I wasn't expecting on, I mean, because you must find this when you go um investigating for oddity files is a sense that some sometimes you go there and you're not expecting anything at all to happen and then you get loads oh, and loads yeah. of activity and you're like I can't explain what is happening other than this has to be some kind of entity or thing or you know ghost call, call it whatever you want to call it yeah. but de definitely some energy that is influencing the area around me so yeah I found that found that bizarre 
but very yeah. enjoyable. So we really want to do more um, investigations. I did get my very own K2 meter for my Christmas present from Sophie this year. So, and I do oh, you are official. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're going to get some <laughs> kit t- together. I mean, we don't have a an odd, odd box or a wonder box like you guys yet, but one day. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I, and day. we... We need to get over there and we need to investigate together because oh that gosh. would be yeah. so much fun. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the offer is still there to come and investigate Sophie's parents' house because that also has a lot of activity. We cl- we covered that on our Christmas episode uh, last year with Sophie's dad. He came on the podcast and talked about the history and all of the ghosts that um, live in the their house uh, so I would love to investigate there with you. Oh, yeah. I phenomenal. love him. And I love the fact that he's open to it. And it just, you know, just kind of yeah. lives with it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I suppose the other main story for me is when I lived in uh, a Georgian house in Cheltenham. And w- this was a house that Sophie had lived. What's the Georgian house? Um, so the Georgian period is, oh gosh, testing my history. I think Georgians is after Victoria. So you've got the Victorian area and then you've got all of the King Georges and that's Georgian. So that would be okay. the period that the house was built. Okay, gotcha. It's a few It's a few hundred years old. So we lived in the basement flat of that house. So we lived where the servants quarters would have been when it was a full house okay for a really long time we were sort of unsettled and I say we but I mean and I mean all of all of us there was me and two other housemates were just sort of a little bit unsettled especially when we'd be there on our own eventually things then started getting weirder so it would start with the doorbell going on its own And we were like, okay, that's probably just, you know, faulty wiring. It's an old house. Then the taps would turn on their own. (gasps) It would be be so bizarre. You would go past. So because we were all on one floor, the bathroom was right next to the kitchen. So you'd walk past the bathroom door to go to the kitchen. And I swear you would walk through to that kitchen and the tap in the bathroom would turn on as Mm. you would walk past as if someone was trying to get your attention. But then when you would be in the bathroom, you would see someone walk past to go into the kitchen. Like you would see a figure walk past. What? Yeah, yeah. It was, this place was super haunted. And I started trying to do some research to find out whether anybody had died there or a little bit more about the history of the house. And I couldn't find anything. And it is definitely on my to-do list to go back and investigate further because there's got to be something that's happened there. Because then we started hearing whispers. Mm -mm. And yes, again, I suppose you could put that down to like the sceptic in me is like, okay, this is a basement flat. That could be the people upstairs in the main house. But it was happening when they weren't there. And I know when they were there because the young boys used to play cricket inside the house. So you knew (laughs) when the family was home because they would cause an absolute racket. And this was much quieter than that. So we we had all of this really strange activity going on. And then it kind of all came to a head probably about six months after it started. And I'd gone away for a trip on my own. And we all had locks on our rooms. So we could, um, we had like keys to get into our rooms so we could lock them for like insurance purposes. So the only person that had access to my room when I wasn't there would be my landlord and so I went away for two weeks and I came back and I opened the door to my room and the lamp the light fitting had been completely taken apart and then placed onto my bed and I have I cannot I cannot explain this to this day so it had almost been sheared off from the fitting so, so but you think this, if that would happen, or is this like the wall switch? I'm, yeah, I'm just in the ceiling. So this the oh, ceiling shit. fitting. So you've got like the lampshade, the light bulb. So that had been shorn off, like you know the bit where you would put the light bulb into it, that plastic bit uh-huh. there that would hold the light bulb. 
That had been yeah. shorn off. It had then been placed meticulously on the bed. So you'd have the lampshade, you'd have the plastic fitting that the light bulb would go into that had been deconstructed and had all of the metal bits taken out of it. And then the light bulb was placed next to that. Now, the light bulb hadn't smashed. There was no smoke to see that there had been an electrical sort of uh, surge that had blown it off. There was nothing. So the first thing I do is go out to my housemates and say, look, guys, I've just flown like however many thousand miles. What is going on? Like, who's been in my room? And they were like, no one's been in your room. Why? And I said, well, come and look at this. Like, explain this to me. And they were like, we have no idea what that is. And so then I rang up my landlord because I was so annoyed. And I was like, oh, Bob, have you been in my room whilst I've been away on holiday? And he was like, no, I've not been to the house for months. Like, why would I come to the house? And I was like, well, I just can't explain what's happened. And he said, oh, what's happened? I told him he was like, that is so strange. And I was like, yeah, I know. Can you come and fix my light, please? (laughs) (laughs) So... He then he then comes over, fixes the light, and then that night I go to sleep. And I woke up in the night and there was something stood over my me whilst I was sleeping and <gasps> its hand was outstretched over my head. And all I can describe it are, as are uh, it's like it was like a shadow. It was like a shadow person. That's the only thing that I can okay. think to describe it as. But it was really angular. So it was just almost like, yeah, really like triangular shapes and, but complete shadow. You saw no features at all. And I looked at it for the longest time. I don't know whether I had sleep paralysis or not, but there was just definitely something going on. And then all of a sudden I sort of shot dead bolt upright in bed let out a bit of a yelp because who wouldn't when you've got something like that hovering over you and then it just completely dissipated into nothing wow yeah and I'm not ashamed to say that ever since then when staying in that house if I was if I went to going to sleep that light would stay on (laughs) like my bedside light would stay on until I would go to sleep so did Bob come fix the light and did he have any explanation whatsoever no, he couldn't explain how it how it happened. And to this day, we really don't understand. And that sometimes I still speak to my housemates. I'm like, can you remember that time, like with my light? And they were like, we have no idea. But if you speak to so- cause Sophie, because Sophie lived in the same apartment before I did, she mm-hmm. had similar experiences to the taps and the whispers and walking past uh, doors. It's there's definitely something there and I don't think it's a very nice presence it either doesn't want people there or it didn't like specific people yeah well you know if it was like a servant's area I could I could see that because they like things a certain they they had to have things a certain way that was their job you know and who are these kids in here tearing up the place I mean I'm sure you weren't tearing up the place but to them you may have we were (laughs) (laughs) We were. <laughs> but yeah, and it sounds like the, the, the passing by the door, that sounds residual. Even the, the tap, I don't know if it was a certain time during the day or if it was random, but that could almost be residual as well. But that light yeah. and that shadow figure, me thinks not residual. No, it was almost like it it was building up and building up and building up. And it sort of was, was almost sort of feeding off us reacting to the small things. And it then culminated in that big event of when I sort of came back. And obviously it it might have been something from a point of view of like, right, you've not been here to pay me enough attention. So I've done this, which caused so much attention to sort of what it possibly could be, which then resulted in that evening. But it was just, and at the same time, I can remember, because I shared this on another podcast um, that Sophie and I did a collab with, I had like a really bizarre nightmare about being chased by this weird figure through Mm -hmm. this just random streets and that nightmare happened. And then when I woke up, that figure was there. It was just Uh, bizarre. I think sometimes, especially, you know, certain spirits, at least to my knowledge, especially the ones that follow me home, I feel like they need attention. And if they're not getting the attention they want, 
that's when they'll mm. bump it up a notch, if you will. I mean, it hasn't happened yeah. lately, but when I first realized that I had brought one home with me. It's like, even it was when Clayton and I st- first started podcasting. It's like, if we didn't mention her in the podcast, something would go wrong with the recording. Was that, was that Anna? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I think some are just, I mean, just like people. I mean, some people are attention whores and some people aren't. <laughs> so I, I mean, it's thirsty bitches, you yeah, know? Yes. Um, <laughs> but I, I, my, my thought first thought was when, when the light was taken apart and that's why I asked if Bob came into, you know, if he said anything afterwards, Mm. maybe it was a spirit looking out for the location and maybe that there was something wrong with the wiring. I don't know. But my first thought is it's not evil. It's not evil. It's not evil. And I try to figure out a way for it to be trying to communicate rather than scare the shit out of us. But that's just me. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think the spirit was evil. I just think the spirit was like, I do not want you here anymore, and I want to tell you that. So I'm going to do as yeah. much as possible to scare you out of here, because you know we yeah you're quite right in the sense that like, we were young when we lived there. We probably we did have a lot of parties. We had a lot of people coming in and out of the apartment. And yeah, if that ghost was um, a servant that had worked there when it was a, a Georgian house they're probably like, what is going on? This is so disrespectful. This isn't how things should yeah. be done. But yeah, so those are those are some of my stories. And I, I remember every ounce of the story about your grandmother. And now I'm worried that you yeah. told me these other two. And at that point, there were too many old fashions involved. And I just Alzheimer'd them. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of old fashions involved. I was not so okay I- the next day. Yeah, we drank that bar out of bourbon. We literally did. It was good times. I'm proud of that achievement. (laughs) I am too. Us and like everybody else in the world were just like, all the bourbon. Oh, shoot. Well, I I am going to tout one more time your wonderful podcast. It's not for the dinner table. I love these two more than you guys could ever know. So definitely check it out. Rate, review, subscribe, all the good stuff. And tell them I sent you. Anything else you you yes. want you need to plug or put out there, David? Uh, no, just thank you so much for having me, Kitsy. We absolutely love Oddity Files, the podcast, and the TV show. And we're so thankful to have met you and all of the other members of your family uh, that we met when you came over. So thank you so much for, for welcoming us into your extended podcast family. We really appreciate it. I love that this world exists and I find other weirdos like myself out there. So thank you for being a weirdo. No problem. (laughs) Anytime. (laughs) Oddity Files is an independent production. Intro music created by DJ Jimmy. 2020 artwork created by me, Kitsy Duncan. The opinions expressed in this podcast are ours and ours alone. Well, maybe yours too. If you like the show and would like to support us, visit oddityfiles.com and click on support or go to patreon.com slash oddityfiles. Every little bit helps with both the podcast and the TV show. You can also support us by watching Oddity Files on Amazon Prime. It's free to Prime members and dirt cheap to those who aren't. You can find us on all the social media sites at Oddity Files. Keep spreading the word by sharing, retweeting, and reposting. Join our Oddity Files Facebook group by searching Oddity Files Fan Group and click join. We'll approve you as soon as we can. All weirdos are welcome. Not into that social media stuff? Tell your coworkers family, even the weird guy who just won't stop talking to you in line for coffee. Oh, and grandma, your grandma will love us. We appreciate each and every one of you. And if it weren't for you, we have no idea what we would do with our lives. If you have a story you'd like to submit, send it on in at oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. Also send in story ideas, silly, weird memes, or just positive vibes to oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. You can also call in and leave that in a voicemail. Call us at 317-300-6633.
1-800-799-9999. To contact us about an appearance, reach out at kitsy at oddityfiles.com. When you have a sec, rate, review, and subscribe. We know it doesn't sound like much, but it really helps us get up there on the podcasting charts. And remember, kids, weird is the new cool. Ghost on. Um, why are you still here? Go on. Get out of here. Turn it off. It's done. Really? I swear, go. Get. Serious, I'm out of here.